scouting aspects, uh, I will be Antje from there, and Zara. Uh, we're supported by the Arts Council of Northern Ireland to produce six exhibitions a year. Uh, of this is one. And this one, in fact, is the 11th version of Materials, Messages of the Meaning. I'm interested in people who make things with their hands. And um, so I came up with that theme that's been around 11 years now. Um, I can't remember all the, all the themes I've had. But I choose a theme and put out an open call. Uh, and for this open call, I think we had about 15 artists respond, which is quite good. And we got it down to five, but then two dropped out for some reason. So they get more money. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'd like to introduce Molly Reed, what's the second name? Molly Reed, yeah, uh, From Dublin. And Jasper McKinney. McKinney from Bambridge. Bambridge and the south of France, yeah. Yeah, well, southwest France, so <laughs> part of the year. So welcome to our space. Um, what would you want to talk about the practice? Hi, um, I'm Olivia Murphy. Um, I'm studying fine art right now and I'm 20 years old. So the reason I'm here today is because I responded really strongly to the theme of sustainability. And being 20 years old, like my whole life has always been revolved around like this climate disaster that's currently happening and um, so I find in all of my work that is a theme and um, that comes up even whether it's through like what I'm doing the project about or the materials that I'm using um, and this piece that I'm showing right now is kind of um, like a striking video of what's happening in Ireland and what's been happening the past 9,000 years. Um, Ireland is kind of taught of this really green country with loads of trees and that's not the reality of it at all. Um, it's currently 11% forest. Um, it started off as 80%, which you can kind of see at the side of this video, it's all green. Um, and then through like colonization and changes in like language and society and the way that we live, it's gone down to was it one percent first, um, and now it's back up to eleven percent. Um, thanks to like, the Irish state um, planning a lot of tree growth in Ireland. Um, I was kind of looking at why this has happened over the past nine thousand years and. Um, a big thing that came up for me was like Irish folklore and how we don't believe in that anymore. And when we did, we were kind of scared to harm the environment because we were so scared of these fairies and these other things, um, like flooding our land. And um, so this, these pieces are kind of about like a land we could live in if we kind of went back to. that kind of Irish mythology and folklore and that way of thinking. Um, a lot of my work um, is also done digitally, which I also recognize as a harm on the environment. Um, a lot of people think just because they're doing something on a computer then that's it. It just stays on the computer and it's not doing any damage, but in reality there's data centers all around Ireland that are creating more energy than all of the rural houses in Ireland, which is a lot of energy that they're creating. Um, so I'm also conscious that that has an effect on everything that I make on my laptop and when I take photos, all that data is also kind of harming everything around us. Um, yeah, I also made this piece, this is kind of an ode to that um, like digital um, effect that we're having and even though this piece was made with old paper that I found in my house and old paint and like an old piece of wood, like all the materials were very 
like sourced sustainably, but the image itself was made on my laptop using software and using data that has caused harm. Thanks a lot, Molly. Thank Hi, I'm Jasper McKinney. I'm, uh, I am feel like I'm 25, but I'm not quite. <laughs> but uh, I really admire the work that Molly has shared. And it's amazing when you're given a theme and thinking about sustainability, how many links there are. Uh, we've been discussing that through today. But my work uh, that's on show here today started with an uh, open sort of submission competition that was run by the Centre for Energy Ethics at St Andrews University in Scotland and they opened this up and created a virtual gallery with a lot of photography about uh, energy around the world and energy sourcing and their whole ethos and their aim is to look how uh, we will transition to a better energy sustainable place and how we will work um, to get to that point while still providing the energy that the world needs. So it's uh, their, their whole philosophy is looking at how that transition can be done in the best way. So originally I did uh, three digital drawings and what I wanted to do uh, was look at the impact that global warming was having on Earth and how man then had, man as in generic, had had on that impact. So the series um, look at seawater levels, uh, storm, increase in storms, and we felt that even here, flooding is, you know, the impact of wind and all of that side of things. Uh, and also then solar and how solar energy as it's increased and the uh, droughts are increasing, but there is also an energy there that can be a resource. So it's that idea of movement across. And then looking at more recently with the project here, the source of water and where we get water from and then i spent part of the year each year in france and they use a lot of underwater source water um, for general use and um, mineral water and it's really important that we look at uh, a variety of uh, water management that really improves things firstly there's so much loss through infrastructure uh, the whole deforestation which molly talked about there and the impact of that on flooding and water runoff and the, the fact that it's not, the water's, because of deforestation, the water's not getting time to actually go into the earth, it's running off the surface. So how we capture that and how we can change and um, introduction of planting schemes and uh, objects that can do that. And I've used the freshwater polyp hydra, which is in, indicated here. Uh, it's a, a creature that uh, doesn't age, it can live for 1400 years in water and that's that idea of how we can harness what we're doing now and use that really as a symbol of how can we survive with the way we're using resources. And the drawings in the back wall there are really about seeds and planting and really how we can really energise the earth through um, introducing plants and you know there's a whole series of things going on like ash dieback that's on the news this week and the impact of that I mean ash is such an important native species in Ireland and yet it's been attacked the horse chestnut's been attacked um, by viruses so again we're looking at all of that and how we can progress through and the pieces the drawings originally for the centre in St Andrews were done digitally on an iPad and then sent, uh, because we're in the middle of lockdown, and projected in a, a gallery that really represented work from uh, the guy who actually won the submission was stuck in Antarctica. He was filming pipelines for oil and could not get back into Australia for 11 months. And um, so he deserved to win the award, in my opinion. <laughs> um, so it's that idea of, you know, really awareness raising, trying to do, realize that small, changes make a difference how we use water how we share water how we you know look after our water sources uh, it's really important so that's sort of the gist of what my pieces are about and i use a range of oil painting digital drawing acrylic and pencil work 
I also make sculptures, so I do try. I do a lot of wood carving with uh, fallen trees, um, and using fine materials as well. So it's trying to use resources to make your work that really um, have you know you're considering that, and something like this show makes artists think. You know, how am I? What, what, how is my practice impacting on uh, things around me? So, if anybody's any questions, I'm happy to answer any. Yeah, see, um, the hydra pack, is that actually or like filter and cleanse the water, or is it more like an indicator? It's more like an, well, I am not a, the scientist, they are doing research on it in Holland, and how, you know, its properties are, it's self-regenerating, so I imagine they're really at the early stages of research in that aspect of it. But it's how it then filters out toxins or things that might be in water. I haven't got into all of that. I was really using it as a, a symbol of, you know, living longer because you're, you know, this creature can do it, so what can we learn from it sort of thing. So we have to learn how to live longer or for mankind to live longer by what we do to the earth. So I was using it in that way. But I, there is research going on. Some of the pieces here with the circles, these are um, from microscope um, slices through the hydro. Yeah. Anybody else? Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Judith Waring and I'm a visual artist. And I'd like to start off this session by thanking Robert and Zara and the Space team for the opportunity to show my work in Lisbon. So I begin by maybe introducing myself and my practice and then go on and talk about the work that's on show. So I'm interested in the three dimensional in objects and in the sculptural, broadly speaking. Materiality, process and scale are fundamental to, to my work. And it's also research led and project focused. I'm interested in visual markers of, of time and of place and particularly of, of boundaries. And as you would expect, these are often site and space specific. They also are um, embraced in, in narratives, either real or, or imagined. But it's not just, my practice is not just about engaging with an idea. I'm also interested in the, the fabrication of, of the work and this process is iterative and the outcomes are generally human scale and as I said before object based. I studied fine art sculpture at Central St Martins in London and then I've gone on to, to show work in various places and uh, have been supported by the Arts Council of Northern Ireland and Arts North Down Borough Council most recently. The work that's on display in the sustainability show is, arises from a project I've been working on for a while connected with Richard Wallace's fountains and this year 2022 is the 150th anniversary of the installation of the first 50 fountains in Paris and Wallace's um, benefaction to the urban poor through these fountains was to enable access to clean drinking water. And the concept of sustainability was not one that was around 150 years ago, but in many ways his benefaction anticipated current societal concerns and challenges and responses and in particular with water goal six of the UN sustainable development goals was very much 
on this um, access to, to clean water for everyone because a lot of the world's population don't have access to clean water and diseases, typhoid, cholera, dysentery are, are rife because of this lack, this basic human need for clean water. And in addition with sustainability, there's also the issue of single use plastic bottles and the waste uh, involved in that. Um, so sustainability, water as, as, a, as a human need, but also as a sculptural material. And again, waste and bricolage, you know, reusing stuff in terms of art is, is something that's been around for a while. So the work itself, I've entitled it Potable, um, after the, the fountains were in, in France, drinking fountains often say non potable for water you can drink and potable for water you can drink. So in May and June, um, I was lucky to spend a couple, some time in, in Paris, uh, funded by the Arts Council of Northern Ireland, and I stayed at the um, Irish Cultural Centre. And that enabled me to walk around finding all the fountains and documenting their locations and their, their site, how, how they occupied the space they were in, which is, as I've mentioned, a concern of mine. So the work is really an outcome from, from that research and there are a number of different aspects to it. I've repurposed an iconic French design in the Orangina bottle. And the Orangina bottle had that distinctive dome, which very much was a visual connection with Wallace's fountains. And the fact there's one in Castle Gardens within touching distance of, of our space, created that, that conversation between my work and, and the fountain there. They were paratactical and um, in close proximity. The, the fact that there, there's, there's, no, there's no water anywhere near the bottles, they're filled with sand, so Sand is a material that suggests drought, desert, aridity and the absence of water and the presence of sand I think create that juxtaposition um, which gives quite a, an interesting dynamic to the, the work. And instead of having a nice sculptural finial on top I have a repurposed wine cork and again the, the natural material with the plastic bottle are, are um, working together but against each other and there's also a historical link there as well. It's been suggested that the lack of drinking water in Paris in the 19th century, especially after the, the siege of Paris in 1870, that ordinary people turned to drinking wine and alcoholism was, was rife and that these fountains were perhaps a temperance um, and were motivated by temperance. I mean, today that sounds a little apocryphal and I'm not sure that that was the case. But, you know, there were social issues uh, around the lack of, of clean water. And the, the Sissel twine is provides a, it snakes around the work and it it's kind of trying to, to make sense of everything but it, it's not really it's messed up and it was a maybe slightly dystopian view of of those nice and neat diagrams you always get when people are talking about things like sustainability and little arrows that, that work very neatly and, and things that all are connected and real life's not really like that. They also bring into play the balloons and the balloons are filled with actual Wallace water. 
and I collected it on the 4th of June 2022 from the applique fountain, the only one of the wall-based fountains still extant, the rest are all the caryatids um, and it, it's in these balloons which are like bladders and in urban centres we are all drinking tap water that's been through five or six other people's systems so the bladder is full of contaminated water um, as well um, but the work is there and I've kind of let it go so it's it's speaking for itself now and I hope you enjoy looking at it and the other pieces in the show so thank you <laughs>